Welcome back to my channel. So behind me here in this nice little box, I've got a brand new generator from Onan Cummins. It's the 2500 watt LP generator and it's their new quiet model that just hit the market. So I threw a little piece of cardboard down on my tailgate and then slid the little pallet out. So what distinguishes this generator from the other from the exterior is the design of the door and these square vents. The other door, the other generator, the, the non-inverter style generator, it has a big door like this also, but it has a black panel that's been inset into the green door and it kind of has a honeycomb style vent in it. So here's some of our exhaust parts in the little bag and a information packet. Looking at the back side of the generator, the AC connections are on the same side as the old model, which is the right rear corner. Our propane connection has moved. It is also on the right rear corner. And our battery connections are on the rear left corner, where on the old model, the battery connections were on the right rear. Let's talk about the inside for just a few minutes. So anybody that had the previous version of this generator knew that it was very difficult, practically impossible, to get the dipstick out to check your oil or to fill it. Something was blocking this from easy removal. Over here we've got the air filter box. That's really easy to, to pull out. just tuck it in there for right now but let's move on to the exhaust. The previous generator had a bolt-on exhaust manifold. This one is kind of tough to see but we have a great big flexible connection in the back here and there's a, there's a flange right here at the end it's tough to see because it's so dark and uh, the, in the kit that I had opened up earlier We have the manifold, or the, the, I guess you could call that the header pipe or the head pipe or whatever, anyway. Then you've also got that big clamp, so that clamp is what clamps this to that uh, flange inside. And see this big silver cap? You can pop that cap out, and in certain applications where you'd want the exhaust running out the side, you can run it out the side. this inside and then like that and then for down exhaust it would mount like this I would think that probably most applications would use a downward facing exhaust probably the only time you'd have a side exit exhaust is maybe if the generator was mounted in a small motorhome like a class B motorhome where you wouldn't have much uh, clearance underneath. You wouldn't want to reduce your ground clearance by having this, this come out the bottom. And then of course your tailpipe and everything. We have a gigantic muffler inside here. And here's a heat shield. And somewhere in there, there's a big fan. And this is a basically a, like an air dam. So it keeps all of the airflow through here. I believe the fan is on the other side, so it's going to draw air in through here. Of course, you can see some big cooling fins. That's cooling for the inverter unit. And then uh, air goes through here, probably then takes a left turn at the back, and then exits out the bottom right there in that big access port. The gasoline and the propane versions of these generators are electronic fuel injected. We'll go ahead and reinstall the air cover and the air cleaner. has two tabs that fit in back here. And then it just pops into place. And here's our circuit breaker. And then here's our start switch. 
you didn't have a remote, this is where you would start it up. Here's a closer look at the HGJBB model generator, which is the old one. As you can see, its entire removable door is black, where earlier I mentioned that it was a black inset into a green door. So the entire door is black and it has sort of hexagonal shaped vent holes in it. Plus, it's a little bit narrower than the access door on the new generator, the HGLAA. Here's some of the basic specifications on the predecessor. Its oil capacity was 6 tenths of a quart. Its engine size was 13.2 cubic inches and it had 7 horsepower at 3600 RPM. Its weight was 125 pounds. Sound level was 70 dB at 10 feet at half a load. Dimensions are fairly similar to the HGLAA. The only difference is that the HGJBB is 12.8 inches where the HGLAA is 13.4 inches tall. Looking at the specs on the HGLAA we can see that it has a much higher oil capacity. It's 1.0 quart. Engine is a little bit bigger displacement. It's 15.4 cubic inches compared to 13.2 and it's 7.1 horsepower compared to 7. It's also 12 pounds lighter, it's 113 pounds as compared to 125. Sound output is less, 65 dB at 10 feet at half load. And then it's also computer controlled variable speed. So the engine speed matches the load demand, which minimizes noise and vibration. On my next video on this generator, I pull the top cover off and do a complete walkthrough pointing out various features and components on the interior. And one of the reasons I pulled the cover off was to check what kind of clearance I had inside of the case of the generator for length of my mounting bolts to use. But be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, hit the notification bell so you get notified when I upload future videos on this generator. I'll probably have about two or three more videos on this generator. One will be a little quick overview when I get it installed and then also various videos when I have it running and do some sound test and also comparing it to the noise output of the HGJBB generator.